Well, hey guys, let's talk about back acne. I don't think it gets enough attention. Most videos I talk about acne on the face, but back acne as well as chest acne, this is pretty common because there are a lot of oil glands on your back and your chest. When it comes to back acne, it can be a true acne vulgaris, which is related to a couple of factors. Your genetics, of course, oil production from the sebaceous oil gland, which is driven by hormones, the acne causing bacterium, cutibacterium acnes, which breaks down that oil and generates inflammation, coupled with a tendency for the lining of your pore to turn over abnormally, get stuck together, and form a blackhead or a whitehead. This can ultimately lead to the formation of deep, painful cysts that ultimately can go on to scar if left untreated. But a lot of people deal with breakouts on the back that look like acne and are something totally different. A common example of that is pterosporum folliculitis, otherwise known as malassezia folliculitis. People like to call this fungal acne. Fungal acne, this is essentially a folliculitis related to malassezia yeast. Here's the thing, you can also have a bit of overlap between the two conditions. Acne breakouts on the back are gonna be aggravated by friction on the skin as well as sweat. People who live in tropical climates with a lot of humidity, especially those who are active outdoors, maybe as part of your occupation, you get really sweaty. That leads to more acne breakouts just because of the trapping of the sweat on the skin, which is an irritant and it creates a favorable environment for that little malassezia yeast to thrive. It's really important to stick to loose, breathable fabrics that are moisture wicking so as to reduce the accumulation of sweat on the skin and also to, of course, shower regularly to remove that sweaty, oily residue off the skin surface. And you certainly want to avoid picking at the acne breakouts. It makes the acne worse and it doesn't allow the acne treatments, which we're gonna cover in this video, to effectively work. Like acne on the face, back acne can be driven by and exacerbated by things that influence our hormones. In women, that might be the menstrual cycle, it might be a hormonal contraceptive pill, or it might be going through menopause. Postmenopausal hormonal levels may lead to acne breakouts. In men, the androgen hormones certainly drive oil production, but if you are taking, say, a performance enhancing drug, testosterone replacement therapy, it is possible that those things drive particularly inflammatory acne breakouts on the back. And certain dietary supplements have been associated with sudden outbreaks of body acne, including on the back. Now, in these situations, the acne is what we call monomorphic, meaning all the acne spots look basically the same, and it sort of comes out of nowhere. The good news with this type of acne is that if you stop the supplement, the acne will clear up in a matter of weeks, and that is it. Check out my video on dietary supplements that trigger acne because I do a deep dive on the different types of supplements that may be contributing to your breakouts, including back acne. When it comes to your hygiene routine, you can incorporate a benzoyl peroxide wash in the shower to treat the back. Benzoyl peroxide helps reduce the acne-causing bacterium, cutibacterium acnes. It's comedolytic, meaning it helps to break up the blackhead and whitehead formation, and it's also anti-inflammatory. I like recommending using a benzoyl peroxide wash as opposed to a product that you leave on the skin because benzoyl peroxide, unfortunately, will ruin your clothes, it bleaches fabrics. And so if you put it on your back, you get dressed, well, that article of clothing is gonna be all messed up. A wash, on the other hand, you lather to the back, let that lather sit on the skin for a few minutes so that it has a good chance of penetrating thickened acne spots and then rinse it off. This way you rinse it off, you get the benefit of the ingredient, but you don't end up bleaching your clothing. Now, of course, you can bleach your washcloth, so be careful there, but yeah, it's a nicer approach in that regard. Alternatively, or in conjunction, you might also elect to incorporate a salicylic acid body wash into your routine. Salicylic acid is anti-inflammatory. It may help cut down to a certain extent on issues related to malassezia. And salicylic acid, importantly, helps to break up blackheads and whiteheads. Similarly, just lather it to the back, let it sit on there for a while so it can really penetrate into thickened acne spots, and then rinse it off. You can even use both of these washes, alternating them one one day and the other the next day. Now, if there's an element of malassezia folliculitis going on, you also might benefit from incorporating an anti-dandruff shampoo used as a body wash to these areas. Anti-dandruff shampoos have ingredients that help reduce the burden of malassezia and can certainly help clear up pterosporum folliculitis, examples of which include zinc pyrithione, ketoconazole, selenium sulfide. Another at-home treatment that won't necessarily clear up the acne reliably, but may help quite a bit because 
because it is something that can be quite effective for acne is to incorporate a leave-on sulfur product. Now, a warning, sulfur does have that little funky smell of eggs, but it definitely can help. It's comedolytic and anti-inflammatory. I always recommend the De La Cruz uh, sulfur acne treatment. That's an option. There's also a sulfur treatment that uh, is meant for people with rosacea that also can be helpful. Uh, just smear it on the upper back and leave it on there. You can use it daily, multiple times a day even. And unlike benzoyl peroxide, that's not going to bleach your fabrics. You've heard about tretinoin. Honestly, tretinoin can be used on the back to treat back acne just like the face, but success with that is kind of variable. Several years ago, though, a new retinoid came out called triferritine. Triferritine, in contrast to tretinoin, is a lot more specific for re certain retinoid receptors, and it is FDA approved for treating acne on the trunk and can be helpful. Now, if there's an element of malassezia folliculitis going on, your dermatologist might prescribe a topical antifungal such as ketoconazole, and they may even prescribe you a course of an oral antifungal to address that. We've talked already about a lot of washes that you can buy in the store and incorporate into your shower routine, but your dermatologist might actually prescribe you a wash called AVAR. AVAR is a combination of sulfur, which we've already talked about, with something called sodium sulfacetamide. And these two ingredients together exhibit synergy for reducing inflammation, breaking up clogged pores, and helping to clear up the acne. Now, not going to necessarily eliminate back acne, but really can help patients turn a corner when it comes to clearing their back acne. In dermatology, we prescribe a lot of antibiotics for things that are not infections. And this always puzzles people, like why treat patients with antibiotics when they don't have a bacterial infection? Because while there is bacteria playing a role, it's not an infection. Antibiotics have this anti-inflammatory property that is actually pretty effective for clearing acne. Um, it's not a long-term solution, but it can be a helpful tool, in this case in particular, for clearing up the acne so that it doesn't go on to scar. And in the meantime, initiating therapies that might take a little bit longer to start working. Um, that way you don't put yourself at risk for scarring. So there can be topical antibiotics such as clindamycin. Your dermatologist might also prescribe you a course of oral antibiotics, usually three months, sometimes more. And this really can help clear up the back acne, but it does come back usually when you stop. So it's not really a long-term solution. It's merely meant to clear up what you have so that other treatments can be initiated that take longer to start. Examples include doxycycline, minocycline, seracycline. Earlier I mentioned the key role androgen hormones play in driving back acne or acne in general. So there's a topical anti-androgen medication called Winlevy, otherwise known as Closcoderone. But speaking of anti-androgens, for women, spironolactone, an oral medication, can be particularly effective for acne in general, including acne breakouts on the back. Oral spironolactone, however, is not something that we prescribe to males because it does have several adverse effects in males, such as breast development. Check out my video on spironolactone because I go over the way we prescribe it and the various side effects that one might expect. If you have a particularly inflammatory acne lesions, uh, one way to clear them up quickly that can be very effective is to do an intralesional steroid injection with uh, triamcinolone. This is a steroid medication, but we can just place it in the skin to calm down the inflammation and help shrink those inflamed nodules, reducing the chance that it goes on to form a scar. Chemical peels can be particularly helpful for acne on the trunk, including the back, and also offer some benefit in terms of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation for deeper skin tones. They don't completely eradicate acne on the back. They're usually not enough on their own, but coupled with other treatments, they really can help patients turn a corner in many cases. There's a newer acne laser called Avaclear, which I have a whole video about that targets the sebaceous oil gland to destroy it and can really be quite effective for treating acne. While it sounds like it might offer the potential to cure acne, in most cases, patients need to continue some sort of acne treatment, but it definitely can help people get to the level of clearance that they are seeking to control their acne. The thing about these lasers is that not every dermatologist has them and there is an expense with maintaining them and having them in office and they are an expensive treatment for patients. For some cases of acne that is quite inflammatory, especially in patients who have other skin conditions going on that are related to acne, like hydradenitis superativa can often coincide with this type of acne. Um, in men, there is a condition called dissecting cellulitis of the scalp, also a condition called pilonidal sinus. In hydradenitis superativa, you guys know it can be 
be quite debilitating. You get these boils like in the skin folds that drain and go on to scar. I mean, a really, really tough disease. There's a class of medications called TNF-alpha inhibitors, such as a Tannercept, otherwise known as Enbrel, that can really, really, really help to clear up this more severe type of acne. So you might be a candidate for that if you've got, you know, a lot of these other things going on. It's something that we don't really talk about a lot in my videos, but definitely worth mentioning, especially here. Also, there is a medication called Dapsone. Dapsone is an antibiotic uh, that we actually use quite a bit in dermatology because one of the ways it works is by suppressing neutrophil migration. And that can really be helpful for clearing up a variety of different types of inflammatory skin conditions. And in some cases can be particularly helpful for acne. There's also a topical version of Dapsone, goes by the brand name Axone. And then of course we have isotretinoin. And isotretinoin, commonly referred to as Accutane, actually offers the potential to cure the acne. It can shrink those enlarged abnormal oil glands and help to heal up those breakouts and quite honestly get them to go away. Isotretinoin can also be helpful for people who deal with recurrent bouts of malassezia because it is, you know, it reduces sebum. And sebum is the, you know, root issue going on with malassezia, excessive sebum. Isotretinoin does have various side effects. So depending on your medical history, you may not be a candidate for it, but it can be very effective, especially for this acne on the back. Patients who are on this medication, they need to follow up with their dermatologist to monitor for side effects. But check out my video on Accutane. I have several where I go over the side effects in more detail, but it can be a game changer for acne on the back. Then for women, combined hormonal contraceptive pills, I mean, they have an estrogen component, can also be very helpful for acne breakouts because they reduce the androgen forces, if you will, on the oil gland and ultimately help to clear up face and body acne. All right, guys, so that is a rundown with regards to back acne. There is no like single best treatment. You know, it, it's kind of tailored to the individual depending on the severity, your background skin type, as well as your medical history, what else you have going on, and you as an individual. That's the thing, like some treatments are really great for certain patients. You take another patient whose acne looks exactly the same, and that treatment is not gonna be right for that person. Maybe because of their lifestyle, maybe because they have some other things going on, or maybe because they have something in their medical or family history that makes a particular treatment less ideal. I really hope this video was informative to you guys who struggle with breakouts on the back. I encourage you to see a board certified dermatologist to have your acne evaluated because as I've said before and alluded to throughout this video, maybe it's not acne. Maybe it's a folliculitis, in which case, you know, a different treatment would be needed. Maybe you have pterosperm folliculitis, malassezia folliculitis. Maybe that's the primary thing that you have going on. Uh, maybe you would benefit more from an oral antifungal. Maybe you have a bacterial folliculitis related to staph bacteria. So there are some other entities that could be going on, but acne breakouts are pretty common. So I really hope this video was informative to you guys in discussing the different therapies that are available. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.